Bible class, we're about to start lesson six from chapter five, which is algebraic expressions. Okay, so we start off with writing algebraic expressions. We actually did this in chapter one. And remember how I showed you all how to uh, set up those uh, different word problems into algebraic expressions because I knew that we were going to get to this in the later chapters and now we are here. So basically, what happens here is it says, the algebraic expression uses numbers, operations, and variables to show number relationships. Variables are letters such as X and Y that represent unknown numbers. Each time a letter is used within the same expression, it represents the same number. To solve algebra problems, you will need to be able to translate number relationships described in words into algebraic expressions. Study the following examples. Now they tell us the product of five and a number. We know product means multiplication, and five and a number would give us five x. A number decreased by 12, decreased by, we know means subtraction, and then so on. It says to do well on algebra courses on a GED mathematical reading test, you must be able to translate a common life situation to mathematical symbols. You will use this skill to write equations and functions to apply formulas and to solve word problems. Okay, let us scroll down here. We look at example one. Kyle processes sales for an online bookstore. The shipping and handling on an order is equal to 4% of the total cost of the order plus 95 cents per book. If C represents total cost in dollars and N represents the number of books in, the, in an order, which of the following expressions could be used to find the shipping and handling for an order? Now we have one, two, and three. This kind of problem is called a setup problem. You need to recognize the correct way to find the shipping and handling based on the total cost and number of items. The relationship is described in the second sentence. Shipping and handling is equal to 4% of the total cost, which is C, plus 95 cents per book, which is N. So the equation is 0 0.04. We change the 4% to a decimal times C, which is the total cost, to plus 0 0.95 times the number of books, which is N. So the correct answer is number three. Now we're going to move on to the next page. And we're going to go over these problems. Now I'm not sure if we're going to go over every single problem, but we will go over at least half of them. And there are 21 problems. Okay, so number one, it says with A, it says write an algebraic expression for each description. Use the variables X and Y. So this is on page 329, just in case um, you're wondering where this is at. So we're going to look at problem number one. Problem number one, it says a number decreased by seven. Now they say use the variables X and Y. So you can use variable X or Y, it doesn't matter. A number we could put as X decreased by, meaning subtracting, seven. So it's X minus seven. Also, one other thing I want to tell you too, with an expression, there's no equal sign. If you see an equal sign in a problem, that is an equation. When there is no equal sign, that is an expression. So we're doing expressions, so there should be no equal signs in these problems. Okay, number two, the product of three and the square of a number is increased by that number. So we know product means multiplication. So it's the product of three and the square of a number. So we could do 3x squared, because this is three, the product of three and a number squared. And then increase by, that means plus. And then it says by that number. So we made that number x. So by that number would be x. Now number three, the product of eight and a number is increased by 10. The product, meaning multiplication, of eight and a number would be eight x is decreased 
So that's subtract, subtraction 10. The product of 8 and a number is decreased by 10. So number 4, the difference of negative 3 multiplied by a number and the product of 2 and another number. So now we know difference means subtraction. But it's the difference of negative 3 multiplied by a number. So we got negative 3x. And the product, so we have minus the product of 2 and another number. So it'd be 2y. Because another number would be the other variable. So number 5. 5 less than the quotient. Now we know quotient means division. 5 less than a quotient of 10 and a number. So listen, 5 less will be minus 5. And the quotient of 10 and a number will be 10 over x. Now, just to show you why it's minus 5 at the end and not at the beginning. If I said 5 less your age, and let's say that you were 25, you would think in your head, okay, this person is 25 minus 5. That's 5 less their age. So that is why the minus 5 went second. Okay, number 6. The sum of negative 8 and the product of 7 and a number. So the sum of negative 8 and the product of 7 and a number. And we know product means multiplication. Number 7. The sum of 16 times a number, so we had 16x, and the number is decreased. It says the product of 16 times a number, and the number is decreased by 3. So it's plus x minus 3, 3 times another number. So again, the sum of 16 times a number and the number is decreased by three times another number. Okay, number eight. A number squared, so we know that'd be x squared, plus the number raised to the fourth power. So it's that same number, but this time it'll be raised to the fourth power instead of the second power. Number nine. The square of a number plus the quotient of 4 and 7. So the square of a number plus the quotient of 4 and 7. So it's 4 divided by 7. All right, so now that is the first nine problem. Now we go to problem 10. It says 6 subtracted from the sum of 15 and the square root of a number. So we would take the sum of 15 plus the square root of a number, and then, it's, and then it's subtracted by 6. Because remember, it's 6 subtracted from. So that means that lets you know that that's at the end. So you have to do all this first and then subtract 6 from it. Okay, number 11. A number less than the sum of another number and 13. Okay, a number less than the sum of another number and 13. So another number and 13, but we have to do the sum of. So that means we have to do this first. Now, we have to incorporate the parentheses because remember, when you are learning order of operations, I told you all that whenever you have subtraction and addition, you do whichever one comes first from left to right. So they're telling you in this problem, they want you to add up the values first, then subtract. So number 12, the square of the sum of a number and six. The square of the sum of a number and six. So we do the sum of a number and six and square it. So we put the number and six in a parenthesis. Problem 13. It says 17 less the sum of 2 times a number plus another number. So we would add 2 times a number plus another number. 
And then we will have to do 17 less that. 17 less this value here. Okay, number 14. It says a number increased by, so we have a number increased by the quotient of 24 and the number. So it'd be 24 over x. Now, number 15. The difference of the product of 2 and a number and 15. So 2 and a number, the product of 2 and a number, and a difference of 15. So it would be 2x minus 15. Okay, 16. Four times the difference of two different numbers. So we'll do the difference of two different numbers, which is x minus y. And then we have to do four times that value. Okay, 17. It says five multiplied by the difference of a number squared and three. So we do a number squared and three, their difference. And it's five multiplied by that. Okay, number 18. It says the product of a number and the difference of 11 and the square root of 100. So we'll do the difference of 11 minus the square root of 100. And then we would do the multiplication of x, because it's the product of x and this value here. Now, we know the square root of 100 is 10, but we're not here to solve this. It just asks us to write out the expression. Okay, now, we go here to problem 19. It says choose the one best answer to each question. All right. A minor league baseball team is given a local charity the sum of $1,500 and 50 cents for each ticket over 2,000 sold for one game. Let X represent the number of tickets sold. If the team sells more than 2,000 tickets, which of the following expressions could be used to find the amount of the donation? So basically what it is, we know that they said that they're going to give the charity $1,500 outright. But then what they're going to do, they're going to give them another 50 cents for every ticket sold over 2000 So what you would have to do is this here. We don't know the total amount of tickets they have that they sold. So that would be X. And we have to subtract out the first 2000 tickets in order to get 50 cents. So if they sold 2001 tickets, that means it's one ticket over which would just give us 50 cents. So we have to account for the 2,000 we need to take out. So X represents the tickets that, um, basically the tickets over 2,000, basically. Okay, so now that took care of, well, X represents the number of tickets sold, not the number of 2,000. So that's basically it for problem 19. So with problem 19, this would actually be letter C. This is letter C. Now we go to problem 20. Now problem 20, it says the sum of three times a number and four times a second number is divided by the sum of two and a third number. Which of the following expressions represents this series of operations? So first of all, we want the sum of three times a number and four times the second number. So we want the sum of that. Now, we want that value divided by the sum of two and a third number. So we use X and Y, so the third number we can make a C. Now I'm gonna put a little line in here to indicate that this is my C, because my Z's look like twos. So now if you look at problem 20, the answer here would be A. The answer would be A if you look here. Now they give you the variables, X, Y, and Z. I forgot this was a multiple choice problem. 
And you see they use the division symbol instead of making it into a fraction. So now we go here to problem 21. Well, problem 21, it says, applying, it says portion 21 refers to the following information. Appliance City employees earn an hourly wage plus commission. Wage options are shown below. Okay, Chandra is paid under option B. If H represents the number of hours worked and S represents Chandra's total sales in dollars, which of the following expressions could be used to find her weekly pay? All right, so if you look here, she get an hourly wage of $6. Now you notice in all of these uh, A, B, C, and D, they do not put the dollar symbol here. So we have to basically get past that. So it says that she makes $6 an hour. Now it says, so if H represents the number of hours work and S represents Chandra's total sales. So basically, you will have $6 for every hour worked. So $6 an hour, so it's six times H. And then on top of her $6 an hour hourly wage, she makes 3% for every sale. So it'd be 0 0.03 times S. So it'd be six, $6 times every hour plus another three cents for every sale. So that would give us for problem 21, that would give us B as our answer. And we are done with the first part of lesson six. And then we're about to start the second part, but I will upload this to YouTube. Have a wonderful day.